you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and welcome to Pointless, the quiz show that puts obscure knowledge to the test. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> welcome back, Leah and Sarah. You were on the show last time. Everyone gets two chances to reach the Pointless final, and this is your last chance. Remind us what happened. It went horribly wrong. Yeah. Horribly wrong with aliens and... Moons. moons. I was defeated by a moon and Sarah was taken out by a... You know, I mean, in the, in the game, in the game, what happened? <laughs> went out. <laughs> yeah, you did. Aliens and moons. It was a category, it was a category. Uh, yes, science fact, science fiction. Not oh. a strong yeah. point. If you, you could uh, make them face? easier than that, that would be better. What would you like to see come up this afternoon, Sarah? Ooh. Like I said before, Westlife, so I was hoping... Westlife? Yeah? Why not? No. Why not? Yeah. Let's, let's, uh, for, now, for now, let's pretend yes. Yes! Yeah. Yes! Um, I'm hoping Wimbledon champions. Ooh. <sighs> very good. I play good. a bit of tennis. It would be nice to see it come up. Very, very good. Welcome back to the show. Anyway, it's lovely Thank to have you. you back. Very best of luck this afternoon. And next, we welcome Avril and Pamela. Now, how do you two know each other? Uh, Pamela and I met at secondary school in second year. Far too long ago to mention yeah. the exact number of years. Just, and just last year, obviously. Twinkling of an eye. <laughs> yes, exactly. And we've been friends ever since, although Pamela, disobligingly, has moved from Edinburgh to Glasgow. How so could she? How I know, could I don't know she, why do she that? Did that. I know. Pamela, how could you do that? <laughs> oh, well, I married somebody from the West uh, Coast. I blame her husband. That's no, the best we'll blame him. We'll we always blame our husbands. We find that's the best way. Uh, what, what do you do, Avril? I'm a chartered surveyor and I value commercial property, shops and offices and indus boring industrial units and things. But Very good indeed. And how about you, Pamela? Uh, I'm a pharmacist, so pills and potions. What would you like to see come up this afternoon, Pamela? Uh, well, science, although not necessarily moons, um, <laughs> not science fiction, uh, but I, I like science, that sort of thing is obviously just with obviously, my background. Obviously, dispensing chemist, that's what you'd like. Um, Avril, how about you? Um, history, maybe something about the Tudors, that's my specialist subject. Very good. Well, welcome to the show, the pair of you. you. It's great to have you here. Very best of luck this Thank afternoon. You. And next, we welcome Mark R and Mark W. Hello. Two Hello. marks. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Uh, uh, are they going to be top marks today or very low <laughs> marks? Do you see what I've done there? Oh, yeah, you see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you see? That was just uh, You seamless. know what? I'd never, I wouldn't have thought of that in a million years. <laughs> no. <laughs> that, is br that is brilliant. Yeah. Can I well, just a little round of yes. applause? Yes. Thank you very much. Well, m mark our words. Uh, we'll. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my! This, this is the gift that keeps on giving. We'll, uh, we'll give it, it as good a shot as we can. It's going to be a can. running gag <laughs> through the whole show. Oh, I Although, do so uh, hope it is. <laughs> mark R. Yes. What would you like to see come up this afternoon? I guess I'd, I'd like to see religion come up because uh, my job's a, a church leader. Um, I, I did a. Uh, PGC in uh, RE, so I guess anything to do with you've religion, got, Christianity, you've got Bible. all of that, all that, that, that covered. Very good. Uh, what do you do, Mark? W? Uh, I'm a, a project manager in a charity that works in the rehabilitation of offenders. So I work uh, in a lot of prisons and, and uh, all over the South Yorkshire, the county that I live in, and uh, I manage a team uh, supporting offenders into education, training, employment, basically rehabilitating them into crime free lives and helping them to integrate more positively within our society. It's a lot of fun. You meet a lot of very, very interesting people that way, and uh, I bet. Great. I bet. Will they all be watching you this afternoon? Maybe. Yes. <laughs> yes. You're going to get. You're going to have to do well. <laughs> I know. I know. It's going to. Yeah. Be, you can't a make a fool of yourself. Yeah. yeah. A lot of pressure. Uh, well, best of luck to the pair of you. It's great to have you on the show. And finally, we have Linda and Dave. How do you two know each other? Well, Linda's my girlfriend, as we say in Teesside, our lass. <laughs> and uh, we met 18 months ago at a karaoke competition. Very good, Dave. Were you singing? We both were singing. What were you singing? I was singing ACDC, and Linda <laughs> sang a Tina Turner one called Simply the Best, but she wasn't, because she didn't win. <laughs> oh. We just didn't appreciate Linda, it. you, the, they were just heathens. They just don't know quality when they see it. And what do you do, Linda? I'm a prisoner custody officer. And, and how about you, Dave? I'm a recycling operator for the local council. In other words, a green bin man. So you actually, you pick up the recycling, or do you, do you then go through it all and sort it out? You have to, well, so with it, put the tray on, bottles in that one, cans in that, and oh, so, <laughs> it's a bit boring, but good for the environment. Very good for the environment. Yes. What would you like to come up this afternoon, Dave? What would be a strong subject for you? Punk rock. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> and not like them, I would science fiction as well. Very good. <laughs> science fiction and punk rock. And how about you, Linda? Geography, maybe food and drink. Oh, you've got all the bases covered between you. 
just about. <laughs> just about. I think that sounds fantastic. Well, very, very best of luck to the pair of you. We will find out more about all of you throughout the show. There's only one person left for me to introduce when shopping for groceries. He can tell the price of each item just by looking at the barcode. He's my pointless friend. He's Richard. Hiya. Hiya. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Should be a good show today. We've only got one returning pair, Leah and Sarah. We didn't really see very much of them last time, did we? They didn't stay well, far too, too little. long. I think we've got some smart people here. I think Avril wants the Tudors, Pamela wants science, Mark wants religion, Sarah wants Westlife. <laughs> <laughs> got something for everybody. None of those things are coming up, but it's, a, it's just an interesting sign of how smart everybody is. Yes, indeed. Well, we put all our questions to 100 people before the show, but this is pointless, so we are after the obscure answers they couldn't get. To stay in the game with a chance to win our jackpot, all our players need to do is score as few points as they possibly can. What everyone's trying to do, of course, is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people gave. And each time that happens, we will add £250 to the jackpot. Now, Andy and Kim won the jackpot last time. People have been winning jackpots almost every game, Yeah, yeah it's they? been a, a rush of it. Yeah. So today's jackpot starts off at £1,000. Right, let's play Pointless. Now, in the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever team has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated. Now, if anyone gives me an incorrect answer, they will score the maximum of 100 points, so try to avoid those if you can. OK, our first category this afternoon is... World Geography. Linda, that's just what you wanted, isn't it? Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what that first question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many XYZ countries as they could. Yeah, we're looking for any country of the world whose common English name includes the letter X, the letter Y or the letter Z please, any of those countries. As always by country, we mean a sovereign state that is a member of the UN in its own right. Very best of luck. Thanks very much, Richard. Now, Leah and Sarah, you all drew lots before the show, and this afternoon you get to go first. We are looking for the names of countries with an X or a Y or a Z in their name. OK, I can't, I'm struggling to think of a clever one, so I'm going to say what's in my head, which is Zanzibar. Zanzibar, you are saying? You're hoping to score as few points as possible with Zanzibar. Let's see if it's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said Zanzibar. Oh, there we are. I just demonstrated how little I know. Um, I'm afraid that is an incorrect answer. That scores you the maximum of 100 points. Bad luck, Richard. Yeah, sorry there, Zanzibar's not, uh, not a country, I'm afraid. Good start. Great. Yeah, it, it does have a Z in it. You'll give me that. So, in fact, it's got two Zs in it. So then, Avril, we are looking for countries with an X or a Y or a Z in their name. Yes, well, geography is not my strong point, and the only country I can think of at the moment is Uruguay. 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 So it should have Uruguay. a Y at the end, I hope. Very good. Uruguay. You're hoping to score as few points as possible. Let's see if Uruguay is right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Uruguay. Well done, it's right. Down it goes. Great score. Look at that. Very well done indeed, Avril. That's a fabulous answer. It's a pointless answer. It adds £250 to today's jackpot. Takes the total up to £1,250. And it scores you nothing. Very well done, Avril. Brilliant. Richard. Yeah, well played, Avril. Uruguay. But a surprising pointless answer. Big country, yeah. but uh, I perhaps you don't think of the why, maybe. But who cares? 250 quid. No arguing with that. Now then, Mark W. Hello. What is the most obscure country with an X or a Y or a Z in its name that you can yeah. think of? Well, I've, I've had a little bit of time to think about this. Uh, my, my wife's done quite a lot of, uh, of, of different work in, in, in Africa. So a, a, a country that's come to my mind uh, that may not be that well known uh, will automatically come to people's mind is, is Zaire. Zaire. OK, well, Mark R is nodding at Zaire. That's a good thing, that is, I guess. You're hoping to score as few points as possible with Zaire. Let's see if it's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Zaire. Yes! Ooh. 
Yes, I had a feeling that might be the case. Unfortunately, Zaire is an incorrect answer, which oh. afraid, means you score the maximum of 100 points. It's a bit of a relief, eh? <laughs> Richard? Uh, yeah, it hasn't been Zaire for quite some time. It's the Democratic Republic of Congo oh. now. I don't know what your wife is up to. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm just she's heading not, off she's to... She's not been to Zaire. Just, just heading off to uh, Zaire yeah. for uh, yeah. a couple and of then, months. Now then, Linda. I'm sticking with Africa as well. OK. I hope it's right. Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe, you are saying. Let's see if that is correct. And if it is, let's see how many people said Zimbabwe. It's right. 36. Very well done. 36 for Zimbabwe. Very well played, Linda. Absolutely safe and sound. Uh, formerly Southern Rhodesia, of course. OK, well, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores as they stand. Brilliant answer, Uruguay from Avril. And then we go up to 36 for Linda and Dave for Zimbabwe, and then Mark W and Leah, both on 100. So Sarah and Mark R, you are going to tussle it out on the next pass. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we are looking for countries with the letter X, Y or Z in their name. Dave. Well, I had a few in my head, wasn't sure about, but the girls give me an idea for another one. Paraguay. Paraguay. Very good. Paraguay, you are saying, Dave, there's your red line. If you come below that red line, you are through to the next round, for sure. Let's see if Paraguay is right, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. Very well done. Through you go. Brilliant. 14. Nothing wrong with that at all. It takes your score up to a nice round 50. Richard. One of only two landlocked countries in South America, fact fans, along with uh, Bolivia. Thank you very much, Richard. Now, Mark R, the pressure really is on you here. It certainly is. I've been debating between a couple, but I'm going to have to go obviously for the one that I think is going to hopefully be pointless. So I'm going to go for Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan, you're saying. Azerbaijan. Sarah is nodding. Yeah. Mm, was that one you had? It's one possible. Oh. Azerbaijan. <laughs> it might be 100. I mean, you just learnt to say that. It's a big Taught word. by Mark, in fact, yeah. just now. <laughs> um, yes. Azerbaijan. OK, well, there's no red line for you, Mark, because you no. are the joint high scorers. Let's see how far Azerbaijan can take you down the column. Azerbaijan, is it right? How many people said it? He's right. Very well done, Mark. That was what we needed from you. Azerbaijan scores you one, takes your total up to 101. Richard. Yeah, well played, Mark. I mean, a, a huge country with a very, very rich and varied history, but most famous now for winning the 2011 Eurovision Song Contest. Of course. That's the big one. Brilliant. OK, now then, Pamela. So remember, we are looking for countries with an X or a Y or a Z in their name. The great news is you cannot lose. Even if you score 100 points, you will never overtake Mark R and Mark W's high score of 101. I have to confess I'm very glad that uh, we can't get knocked out because geography is not my strong suit. I was going to say Yemen. <laughs> Yemen. Let's see if the Yemen is right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. No red line for you. You are through, come what may. It is right. 27. 27, that's a good score. For the Yemen, Richard. Yeah, very well played, Pamela. Very good answer. Safely through to the next round. So, Sarah, the only thing that will absolutely see you through to the next round is a pointless answer. Obviously, you can tie if you can find a country scoring one. OK. But it's either a tie or a pointless. The pressure's or not on Or we have to say goodbye to you. Oh, dear. Which I think would be wrong. <laughs> it would be wrong. I was going to think of Yemen as well. Um, but I'm going to go with Swaziland. Swaziland? Yes. I hope I've spelt that right. <laughs> Swaziland. What do you think, Leah? She's got great geography mm, knowledge, usually. Uruguay <laughs> was yeah. pointless. Yeah. I'm hopeful. Oh, I'm not so sure. And you want me to find out? Swaziland, is it right? Come on. Come on, Bilks. There is a red line, take my word for it, right at the bottom there. 
If you can hit that red line, you are through to the next round. Swaziland, is it right? How many people said it? Good luck. It's right. It's right, Sarah. Very well done. It has to go down to one or zero. Oh, no! Oh, bad luck. That scores you three. It takes your total up to perilously high, 103. I'm sorry to say. Richard. Yeah, it's a very, very good answer. I'm sorry about that. And uh, let down by Zanzibar, unfortunately. Now, Zanzibar and Tanganyika joined together to form Tanzania. So oh. Zanzibar is part of Tanzania yeah, now. Of Would have scored you 19 points. Would have seen you safely yeah. through Tanzania. But uh, tough luck again. A very good answer. Let's take a look at some of the pointless answers. I know some people at home will have got all of these and would have been scribbling down throughout. Let's take a look. Kyrgyzstan, which has got uh, a Y and a Z. It's the only country in the world that's got two of those letters in it. Guyana, also pointless. Bosnia and Herzegovina was pointless. Uruguay, amazingly pointless, and the Seychelles as well was a pointless answer. Let's take a look at the, uh, the most obvious answers, the ones that most of our 100 people said. Uh, Yemen, in fact, the uh, third most popular answer with 27. Then Zimbabwe with 36, and right at the top of the list, Zambia with 47 points. Thanks very much, Richard. So at the end of round one, the losing pair with the highest score, Sarah and Leah. Oh. Gutted. Oh, I can't dear. That. Oh, never mind. It was fun. Thank you. Out Thank in the you. first round last time, out in the first round this time. Not, I think, a this true isn't reflection. This is a lucky station. <laughs> it's not. No. It's not. And no, nor is it, I think, a, a fair reflection of your, of your obvious pointless knowledge. <laughs> but uh, there we are. I'm afraid that Thank is, nonetheless, you. what has happened. So we have to say goodbye to you, but thanks very much for playing, Sarah and Leah. Brilliant. <laughs> but for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. Now, there's only room for two pairs in the head-to-head, -head, so one team's going to be leaving us at the end of this round. Our category for round two this afternoon is film. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, our round two question concerns actors and the films in which they cross-dressed. Yeah, we're going to show you two boards of uh, six actors and actresses with a year, and we asked 100 people to tell us in which film did they play or impersonate a member of the opposite sex during that year. The more obscure ones are going to score you fewer points. If you give us an incorrect answer, though, you'll score 100 points. It's going to be 12 actors in all up there, 12 films to get. Very best of luck. So we are looking for the names of the films in which these actors cross-dressed in the years shown. And we have got... Tony Curtis, 1959, Barbara Streisand, 1983, Julie Andrews, 1982, Amanda Bynes, 2006, Gwyneth Paltrow, 1998, and Robin Williams, 1993. I'll read out those names again. I won't read the dates this time. Tony Curtis, Barbara Streisand, Julie Andrews, Amanda Bynes, Gwyneth Paltrow, and Robin Williams. There they are. OK, we are looking for the names of the films in which these actors cross-dressed in the years in brackets. So, Avril, what do you think about that board? Well, uh, first of all, I was panic-stricken, and then I've started to think of things, but of course, as usual, it's to try and think of things that are obscure. Well, indeed. Because Tony Curtis is in this film, and he's one of, it's one of my favourite films, I'm going to say um, the top one, Tony Curtis, Some Like It Hot. Some Like It Hot, an excellent film. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. Some Like It Hot for Tony Curtis. It certainly is. 40. Not bad. Not a bad answer. 40 is for Some Like It Hot. Yeah, the wonderful Some Like It Hot from 1959, exactly right. It's got one of the most famous closing lines in uh, Hollywood movies, where he finally admits that he's a man, and the guy says, well, nobody's perfect. <laughs> Very good indeed. Now, Mark. Yes, well, I only Mark. knew two on the board, and the Tony Curtis one's just gone, mm -hmm. so... I'm left with Robin Williams, and I think he was in Mrs. Doubtfire. Mrs. Doubtfire. You're saying for Robin Williams, there he is at the bottom of the board, 1993. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Mrs. Doubtfire. It's right. Of course it is. 61, though. Yeah. Ooh, that's a high score. 61 for Mrs. Doubtfire, Richard. Yeah, very big score. A man splits up with his wife and then dresses up as a, as a housekeeper to spend time with his kids. There we are. So then, Dave. So remember, we are looking for the films in which these actors cross-dressed in the years indicated. 
you're the last person to have this board, so you can talk us through all the gaps there and fill them in and then pick your favourite answer. Well, I should be good at this because I do a lot of cross-dressing. But <laughs> don't get worried, I'm a big fan of the Rocky Horror Show. So we'll get all the gear. Oh, on I see. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think Barbara Streisand might be one called Yentl, but I'm not sure. I don't know Amanda Bynes, Gwyneth Paltrow, but I think the Julie Andrews one, which I'm going for, is Victor Victoria. Victor Victoria, you are saying for Julie Andrews. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. Sounds good to me. Well done, Dave, that's right. Down it goes. The best score of the past, Dave, 13. 13 for Victor Victoria, Richard. Yeah, very good answer. She plays a woman playing a man playing a woman. Let's take a look at the other answers here. It's quite a tough round, this one, I think. Barbara Streisand, you're absolutely right, Dave. It was a Yentl in 1983, would have scored 18 points. Gwyneth Paltrow, do you remember that? Shakespeare in Love, that's what it was. <laughs> that's correct, for Shakespeare in Love. Uh, would have scored you eight points. And Amanda Bynes starred in a, starred in a film called She's the Man. Very well done if you got that, it's one point. It's loosely based on, uh, on Twelfth Night, she tries to get a, uh, on the football team at her high school. Very good indeed. Thanks, Richard. Well, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores at this stage. Dave and Linda looking very, very strong on 13 there, thanks to Victor Victoria. Then we go up to Avril and Pamela on 40, and then up once again, you see Mark and Mark. Again, top marks. Yes, top marks. Yeah. So, yes, Mark W, it's all in your hands. It is, isn't it? We're clinging on. You clinging are. On. You are, just. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we're going to put six more actors on the board, and here we are. We have got Patrick Swayze, 1995, Kate Blanchett, 2007, Guy Pearce, 1994, Dustin Hoffman, 1982, John Travolta, 2007, and Hilary Swank, 1999. I'll read those one more time without the dates. Patrick Swayze, Kate Blanchett, Guy Pearce, Dustin Hoffman, John Travolta, and Hilary Swank. Now, remember, we're looking for the films in which these actors cross-dressed in the years in brackets. And obviously you're trying to find the one that the fewest of our 100 people knew. Now, Linda. This is one of my weakest subjects. OK, well, let me <laughs> put you in the picture. Um, the marks are on 61. They're the high scorers, which means if you can score 47 or less, mm. you are through to the next round. I can't think of anything. To go for Dustin Hoffman. I'm going to have to. I'm. I'm going to have to start pushing you. I once was a man. <laughs> I once. Was, listen, don't let. Let's not do the confessionals now, Linda. Let's. Um, <laughs> Dustin Hoffman. I once was a man. Okay. <laughs> let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. There's your red line, Linda. If you can get below that red line, you're through to the next round. Oh, bad luck, bad luck, bad luck. Unfortunately, as you knew, that's an incorrect answer, which means you score the maximum of 100 points, I'm sorry to say, which takes your total up to 113. So, Richard, I once was a man. I remember that evening, yeah, very well. <laughs> Unlucky, Linda, but I would, I, you would watch that film, wouldn't you? Dustin Hoffman, I once was a man. Yeah? Yeah, of course you would. I won't give you the right answer, just in case Mark or Pamela want to have a go at the same one. Now, Mark. So remember, we are looking for the films in which these actors cross-dressed in the years indicated. The high scorers on 113 mm. are Linda and Dave. Yeah. You've I've... been thrown a bit of a lifeline there. It means if you can score 51 or less, you are through to the head-to-head. -head. Film is one of the weakest subjects for me. Uh, I'm right. not a big film buff at all. This is music um, to Linda and Dave's yes, ears. Yeah, and uh, particularly cross-dressing films are not my <laughs> favourite types of films. So I'm going to go with Kate Blanchett. I haven't seen the film, but remember it coming out. My dad's a, a big Bob Dylan fan. And so I, I, the only stab I can have is that it, the film is called Dylan. Dylan. Mm. But I'm not confident on that. OK, well, let's see if Dylan's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Here is your red line coming in. Nice and high. If you get below that red line, you're through to the next round. Dylan, is it right? How many people said it? Unfortunately, that's a wrong answer, which I'm afraid 
<laughs> means you score the maximum of 100 points, takes your total up to an unbeatable 161. <laughs> Richard, Dylan. Yeah, uh, this, uh, this board is going very well, isn't it? Uh, again, I won't give you the, the right answer just in case Pamela wants to have a go at that one as well. Fui, Linda and Dave. Pamela and Avril, also Fui. Doesn't matter what you score here, you are still in the head-to-head -head round. So, Pamela, talk us through the board and fill in any gaps you'd like to fill in. Um, I'm struggling, I have to confess. I knew some of the answers on the first board, but <laughs> I looked at all of them and thought, hmm, nope. Dustin Hoffman, I remember the film, I remember what he looked like and what he sounded like, but I have no idea what the name of the title is. I don't know what Guy Pearce um, cross-dressed in um, or the others. So I'm going to just have a complete guess because I don't know. So I'm just going to say John Travolta and Pulp Fiction. See, that would have been fun. <laughs> <laughs> we had long fun. hair in it, didn't he? Yep. Yeah, OK, well, John Travolta, Pulp Fiction, you are saying. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. No red line for you, obviously, because you're through. Whatever happens. John Travolta, Pulp Fiction. No that's bad luck, Pamela. <laughs> I'm afraid that's an incorrect answer, which means you score the maximum of 100 points, but it doesn't matter at all. You're still through to the next round. Richard. Yeah, sorry, Pamela. Uh, 100 points each in that, uh, on that board. Uh, I'm going to have to fill in all six. So if you've got all six of them at home, uh, you've done particularly well here. Do you want to have a go at some of these? Do you know the Dustin Hoffman film that everyone's struggling to remember? Tootsie, I know that one. Tootsie, that's exactly right. Very good, would have scored you 46 points. Guy Pearce, 1994. Priscilla, Queen that of the Desert. is The Adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Exactly right, would have scored 17. Let's clear up the John Travolta one. The, um, Hairspray. Hairspray, yes. exactly right. Brilliant yep. film, would have scored yep. 14 yep. points. Hilary Swank won an Oscar for her role in this film, where she cross-dressed. From 1999, it was Boys Don't Cry. Again, well done if you got that. Nine points. Kate Blanchett, you're absolutely right. It's the, it's the Dylan film where she dresses as Dylan. I couldn't remember the title either. Do you remember it? It's I'm Not There. I'm not there. Yeah. That's the answer there. Would have scored you one point. Right at the top of the board, Patrick Swayze. It's a pointless answer. So very well done at home if you said to Wong Fu, thanks for everything, Julie Newmar. Pointless answer. And very, very well done if you got all six of those. It's a very tough board. Oh, to what? God, he kind of made himself popular with the people whose job it is to put the letters up on the the canopies outside cinemas. They must have been up there hours. Yeah, they were, they were relieved when AI took over the next week, weren't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much, Richard. So at the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score is Mark and Mark. Mm. I'm not there. Oh, I'm not, not now there. anymore, so. Well, appropriately, yes. Um, well, bad luck. I'm afraid this is where we say goodbye to you, but only for this edition of Pointless. You'll be back next time when let's hope you go even further. But meanwhile, so. great contestants. Thanks very much for playing. <laughs> But for the remaining two pairs, things are about to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. -head. Now, very well done, Linda and Dave, Avril and Pamela. You've made it through to the head-to-head. -head. Now, obviously, only one pair can make it through to today's final and play for the jackpot, which currently stands at £1,250. <laughs> Now, for each question, each pair needs to give me just one answer, but you are now allowed to confer. All you have to do is come up with an answer that scores less than the other pair, and you will win that question. The first pair to win two questions will be playing for today's jackpot. Let's play Pointless. OK, here's your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Steve Redgrave gold medal partners as they could. Steve Redgrave gold medal partners. Richard? Yeah, we're looking for any of the seven men who've won a gold medal in partnership with Steve Redgrave. Any of the seven men to have won an Olympic gold in partnership with Steve Redgrave, please. OK, thank you very much. Now, Linda and Dave, because you played best throughout the show so far, you get to go first. Right. I'm not sure about one, but we'll go for safe, we hope. Matthew Pinston. Matthew Pinston, you're saying. OK, Matthew Pinston. Avril and Pamela. Have you got an answer? Pamela's got an answer. We've got an answer. Not, not one of our strong areas. Um, the only one I could think of was uh, James Cracknell. James Cracknell. Yeah. OK, so we have Matthew Pinston and we have James Cracknell. What do you think, Dave? I love the Cracknell one, but I couldn't remember his... Christian there, so... OK, see. well, Linda and Dave, you've gone for Matthew Pinson. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said Matthew Pinson. He's right. Mm. 
Not a bad score. 36 for Matthew Pinson. And Avril and Pamela, you have gone for James Cracknell. Let's see if that's right. If it is, let's see how many people said James Cracknell. Good luck. It is right. And it beats Matthew Pinson. Look at that. Down it goes. 13 for James Cracknell. Lovely low score there of 13 beats the 36 that Matthew Pinson scored for Linda and Dave, which means after one question, Avril and Pamela are up 1-0. Richard. Yeah, very well played. There's some, there's some good uh, obscure answers here for people who know their rowing or their Olympics. Let's take a look at them. Richard Budget was a pointless answer. He won in the, in the Cox Fours in 1984 alongside Martin Cross, who would have scored you one point. Adrian Ellison was there. Cox, he would have scored you one. Tim Foster, two. Uh, Andy Holmes, who won two golds, uh, two Olympic golds. Andy Holmes uh, died recently, sadly. He would have scored you seven. James Cracknell also won two golds, 13 points. And Matthew Pinson, right at the top, won, uh, won four golds, three of them with Redgrave. Thank you very much, Richard. OK, here is your second question. Now, Linda and Dave, you have to win this question to stay in the game. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many members of the Munster family as they could. Members of the Munster family, Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any of the five members of the, uh, the TV family, the Monsters, who appeared in 10 or more episodes of the TV series. Not looking for names of family pets, please. OK, thank you very much. Now, Avril and Pamela, you get to go first this time. Cool school. OK. Right, we're not sure. We're getting muddled up with... <laughs> other unusual families and um, so we're going to have to go I think play a safe answer and say Herman Munster Herman Munster mm. okay Linda and Dave mm. what would you like to say I think we'll go for Eddie the boy Eddie, Eddie. okay we have Herman and we have Eddie Avril and Pamela have said Herman let's see if that's right and if it is let's see how many people said Herman it's right yes oh, I knew as you feared, that's quite a high score. 57 for Herman Munster. Linda and Dave are going with Eddie. It has to be right and it has to go below 57. It is right. And it keeps you in the game. Very well done, Linda and Dave. Eddie scores 16, which means, after two questions, Linda and Dave, Avril and Pamela are even on one all. Richard? Yeah, well played, Linda and Dave. Good answer. Let's take a look at all five of them, though. There, was, uh, there were a couple that would have won it. Marilyn, the niece, would have scored you four points. Lily, the, uh, the matriarch of the family, 13. There's Eddie on 16. Grandpa scored 22. The actor who played Grandpa is the same age as the actress who played Lily, although she was his daughter. And Herman, right at the top there, with 57. OK, so here is your third question. Whoever wins this question goes through to the final. Good luck. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many UK cities beginning with N as they could. UK cities beginning with N. Richard? Yeah, we're looking for any of the five cities in the United Kingdom whose name begins with an N. By city, we mean that somewhere that's been granted official city status by the Crown. A little challenge. See if you can get all five of those at home. It's quite hard. Thank you very much, Richard. So, Linda and Dave, you go first this time. Right. Uh, we're going to go for Northampton. Northampton. OK, Northampton. Avril and Pamela. You can, now con you can continue conferring, <laughs> if you like. We're having a debate about which, which one. Um, we can think of uh, Nottingham, obviously, and... We think Norwich might be a city as well. So it's like choosing between those two. Nottingham, I think, will be quite popular in terms of popular answer. So what do you think? It's up to you, I think. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm no geography. I don't know where anything. I'm lucky to get home of an evening. I can't find my way. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, that is true. Um, <laughs> let's go for Norwich. 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 OK, so we have Northampton, we have Norwich. Linda and Dave went for Northampton. Let's see if it's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Northampton. Oh, bad luck. A city. Northampton, a not city. a city. Which means, Avril and Pamela, <laughs> Norwich merely has to be correct and you are through to the final. Norwich, good luck. Let's see if it's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Norwich. On the ball, well city. Look at that. 81 <laughs> for Norwich. Very good. <laughs> That 
That means that after three questions, Avril and Pamela are through to the final 2-1. Richard? Yeah, big score for Norwich, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, Northampton, not a city, I'm afraid. It's a very large town. It did apply uh, in the millennium when everyone, all, lots of different towns were applying to be cities. It applied, but it didn't get it. Northampton Town, the name of its football team. Let's take a look at all five of these. Uh, very well done if you've got all of them. Newry in uh, Northern Ireland was the best answer on the board. Two points. Newport in Wales, 23. And then there's Nottingham, 58. Newcastle, 76. And Norwich up the top on 81. Very, very well done if you got all five. Thank you very much, Richard. So the losing pair at the end of the head-to-head, -head, I'm afraid, is Linda and Dave. Well, that was, uh, that was tough. Northampton. Mm. I was saying Newcastle as well. I'm I know. Rich. <laughs> Didn't listen. Oh, well. Oh, and I, I was going through it mentally. I, was, I had all sorts of players. I had Nantwich, for heaven's sake. Ah, <laughs> oh, the beautiful city of Nantwich. The city of Nantwich. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Now, Dave, what have you learned? I think I can, I can think of one thing you've learnt on this show. Northampton is a town. <laughs> yeah, well, all right, two things. Northampton is a town <laughs> and, and listen to films. Linda. <laughs> yeah. But we will see you next time when I hope you'll make it through to the head-to-head -head and maybe possibly even the final. But meantime, thank you very much for playing. Linda and Dave, excellent. <laughs> but for Avril and Pamela, it's now time for our pointless final and the chance to win our jackpot of £1,250. <laughs> Well, many congratulations, Avril and Pamela. You've fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at £1,250. The rules are very, very simple. To win that money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people could think of. We've had one pointless answer on the show today, and Avril, it was yours, your brilliant Uruguay in the first round. You only have to find one more pointless answer now, and you will go home with that money. First, though, you've got to choose a category, and you can choose from these three options. They are playwrights, football, composers. Mm. What's the lesser of the three evils, Pamela, do you think? I don't know. I might know some football teams. I think we'll have to go for football because... Shall we go for football? Yeah, I think we'll have to. <laughs> OK. OK. We would like to choose football, please. Very good. Pamela and Avril, you are going for football. Let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many UEFA Champions League final oh, host be, yeah. cities as they could. Mm -hmm. Richard. Uh, yeah, we're looking for any city which has hosted the UEFA Champions League final or the European Cup final for that, right through from the start of the competition through to the 2011 final, please. OK. You have up to one minute to come up with three answers, and all you need to win that £1,250 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Your 60 seconds start now. Do you think it, do you think it definitely Glasgow? I'm sure it's been in Glasgow because I remember getting stuck in the train station right, with Glasgow. all the fans. OK, so. well, I can think of obvious things like Milan. I wish I had my husband here. He likes football. Yeah. He'll go mad with me. Glasgow. Glasgow. We can go for Milan. And that's an know. obvious one, but I can't think of anything else. What about um, somewhere um, in quick. Spain or somewhere Spain, in Germany? Uh, yep, Spain. Um, well, it's the cities you need. Barcelona. Barcelona. Let's go for Barcelona. But it's so. going to be pointless, though. That'd be a high one. Well. How about then? Um, quick, quick, let me think. Um, Gosh, what's um? Ajax, where do they play in Netherlands? I mean, that's too hard. I can't think. Okay, Glasgow, Milan, Barcelona. And Barcelona. We'll go for three. Uh -huh. Maybe they won't think of Glasgow. Right, <laughs> so it's Glasgow, Milan, and Barcelona. Yeah. Okay. 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 You All have right. your three answers. We're going to stop the clock there. Very, very good indeed. I mean, I don't know if they're right, but <laughs> <laughs> very good sure. to have reached uh, reached a consensus on your three answers before your minute was up. We were looking for host cities of the UEFA Champions League Cup final. I now need your three answers. You see. Glasgow. Glasgow. Milan. Milan. And Barcelona. And Barcelona. Now, of those three, which do you think is your best shot at a pointless answer? Glasgow. I never. Glasgow. 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 We'll put that yes. last. Mm -hmm. which, which is your least likely, do you think? <laughs> Milan. Milan. Milan, Milan Barcelona, Glasgow. Yeah. OK, let's put them up on the board in that order, and here they are. Milan, Barcelona, and Glasgow. There they are. We were looking for host cities of the UEFA Champions League Cup final. You said this was your least confident answer. You only have to find one pointless, remember, to win that jackpot of £1,250. Let's see how many people said Milan. Is it right? How many people said it? Milan. Yes, it is right. You thought it might be right. You thought it might be quite a high score. Well, we shall discover 
Down it goes. This is your first shot at the jackpot of £1,250. 20. Not bad. Not bad. So if 20 people thought of Milan, it tells us something about our 100 people and what they know about UEFA Champions League Cup final host cities. Well, unfortunately, that's not a point to answer. You only have two more chances to win today's jackpot. What would you do with £1,250? I think we'd have to hit the town, Pamela, wouldn't we? Yeah. Well, we'll have a little... Hit the town. Will you hit the yes. town here down in London? I think so. I think and then take we... nothing back with you up to Scotland? Yes, absolutely. I've got well, too many children and too many husbands. Oh, so I should... Yes, exactly. Leaving. I should hit yes. the town. Yes. We are looking for host cities of the UEFA Champions League Cup final. Let's hope nobody said your next answer, which is Barcelona. This has to be right, obviously, and it has to be pointless. OK, this is for the jackpot. Your second shot at the jackpot. Barcelona, how many people said it? Is it right? It is right. It is right. This is your second crack at that jackpot of £1,250. 20 people said Milan. 44 people said Barcelona. But these, uh, these you knew these were, these were obvious answers. Yes. You knew that. Well, we've not asked any Glaswegian people the answer to this. You never know. <laughs> okay. We've had Milan, we've had Barcelona, but Glasgow, as it used to say on the car sticker, Glasgow's miles better. Yes. It's miles better. Yes. You only have one more chance to win today's jackpot, £1,250. This is it, Glasgow. It's all hinging on Glasgow, <laughs> and you are banking on people overlooking Glasgow. Let's hope so. It has to be right, obviously. Glasgow, is it right? How many people said it? Good luck. You're absolutely right. Glasgow is a right answer. Now, if this goes all the way down to zero, you will leave here with £1,250. Down it goes into single. Oh, not quite in single figures. <laughs> Well, I'm delighted to say that Glasgow is more on the map than you might have thought. Mm -hmm. But I'm sorry to say you haven't managed to find that all-important pointless answer, which means you don't leave with the jackpot of £1,250, which will roll over onto the next show. It's the first time I've been able to say that for about a week now. <laughs> um, but you have been fantastic contestants, and you do, of course, get to take home our pointless trophy. So very well done. <laughs> Yeah, that's tough luck. Three correct answers, though, which is more than we often get. But there are four pointless answers up there. Let's take a look, see if you've got any of these at home. There are a couple of German cities there. Might be the way to go. Bari in Italy, which hosted it in 1991. Bern in Switzerland, which hosted in 1961. Gelsenkirchen in Germany, 2004. And Stuttgart, which held it twice, which is uh, 1959 and 1988. Very well done if you've got any of those at home. Thank you very much, Richard. Did you know any of those? No. No. Oh, come on, Gelsenkirchen, come on, we <laughs> all know that. It just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> oh, dear. Well, unfortunately, we do have to say goodbye to you, Avril and Pamela. It's been brilliant having you on the show. Thank, Thank you. you so much for playing. Thank you. Thank you. Nobody's won our jackpot today, so it rolls over, which means on the next show we will be playing for £2,250. Join us next time, see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>